New tonight, Metro is asking for your help finding a man responsible for two robberies, and part of his M.O. is pretty easy to spot. 13 Action News reporter Masa Saidi is live from Maryland Parkway in Sahara with details and why police believe he's dangerous. Masa. Steve, for obvious reasons, criminals often try to hide their identity. Police say this guy did take off his shirt, but instead of using it to cover his face, take a look. Police say he actually put that shirt on top of his head. This is video taken as he walked into an adult bookstore on Main Street. We're told he pushed a cashier away, stole the money. Now, here's the scary part. Police say he reached for his waist, possibly for a weapon, and even tried to kidnap the worker. Thankfully, he didn't. Just this week striking again. We've had some cold temperatures and as you can see he did have his shirt on this time as he hit up one of the businesses where I am standing right now uh, here on Sahara. We're told this time he did escape on a small black bike. Detectives believe his crimes could escalate and violence so they want your help to get him off the street as soon as possible. Reporting live, Masa Saidi, 13 Action News. Masa, thank you. Take a close look at your screen right now. Police are also looking for this woman tonight after they say she pretended to hug a man, then stabbed him downtown. We're told the victim was waiting in the valet area of El Cortez when the woman stabbed him twice, then took off. Here you can see her on surveillance cameras in Container Park. As for the victim, he was treated at UMC and is doing okay tonight. Those who know the victim say he was in town visiting his daughter. New tonight, a reason to think twice about renting out your home over the Memorial Day weekend, even if you need the extra cash. Clark County Code Enforcement Officers are promising to target illegal short-term rentals over the holiday weekend, including Airbnb and Home Away. Renting your home out for less than 30 days is illegal across most of the Las Vegas Valley, and violations can result in a $1,000 a day fine. To report an illegal short-term rental in your neighborhood, we've set up a link from our website, ktnv.com. Well, 13 Action News has been tackling the squatter problem around the valley with your help for some time now. We've worked with several agencies to help you fight back. One of those cases is this house near Valley View in Charleston. Nathan and his neighbors saw five squatters in this home and were immediately concerned. It was kind of scary because, you know, you don't know what they're going to do. Uh, if they, they're not there legitimately, who knows if they're going to just make it a party house or a flop house. Well, they immediately did a few things. They reached out to 13 Action News and called Metro and Code Enforcement, and the problem got fixed. Nathan says the squatters showed up Tuesday and were gone with the house boarded up by Wednesday night. If you see squatters in your neighborhood, we want to know about it. Just send us an email to squatterspotters at ktnv.com and please include your name and your phone number. At least a dozen people in a Summerlin neighborhood say they were a little freaked out by a couple of solicitors who wouldn't take no for an answer. A no soliciting sign is posted at the entrance of the neighborhood near Charleston and the 215, but Alan Altman tells us the signs and a bike lock on his gate weren't uh, enough to stop the men who were apparently with a pest control company. And he's yelling up the stairs, knock, 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 knock. Anyone home? Hello? Knock, knock. I said, we're not interested. Thank you very much. I said, also, I'm the uh, board president here. This is private property. It's posted. No trespassing, no solicitation. I have to ask you to leave. And he said, whatever, turn around and walk down the street. He says the two men were out for hours Wednesday, and some people who answered their doors said they seemed to be peeking inside their homes. We went to the Evolve Pest Control office, but managers weren't there and didn't call us back, and we couldn't find their business listed on the Better Business Bureau's website. Senior citizens in Henderson are jaywalking near their homes and putting their lives on the line, but they say they have no choice. The seniors we spoke with say the 7-Eleven across from their living facility on Boulder Highway and College Drive is the only store close enough for them to walk because many don't have any cars. Well, there is no crosswalk unless they go down to Boulder Highway, which can be hard for those with hip and knee problems. I've had several close calls coming back. And they speed. You have to run, okay, because they will hit you. Well, they also tell us they'd be happy with a crosswalk or a pedestrian light to make their near daily commute safer. Henderson's top cop is off the job and reportedly under an internal investigation tonight. We're told police chief Patrick Moores is on administrative leave, possibly over a mailer he's accused of sending to local businesses, endorsing a group that wants to help the police. The city of Henderson is named Todd Peters as its acting police chief. 
Well, every year, hundreds of adults are sexually assaulted in Las Vegas, but if they want to gather evidence to put their abuser in jail, there's only one hospital they can go to. 13 Action News reporter Annalise Ortiz looked into why that is and whether more services are needed in our area. If I say no, well, I bet the next one that said no, he left her alone. We're protecting this woman's identity because she's a victim of sexual assault, raped by her baby's father. She came to University Medical Center to have a rape kit done. The DNA evidence helped put him behind bars. It shows that he was there. He couldn't lie. And coming to UMC was her only option. It's the only hospital in the Las Vegas area where a sexual assault nurse examiner or SANE nurse is available for adult victims. There's only one primary SANE nurse here, swamped with 60 to 80 exams per month. I was waiting for a long time. I wasn't the only person. I had to wait a long time for the bed. In the meantime, while I'm waiting, I don't know, I just felt gross. Dr. Dale Harrison oversees the same program at UMC. He tells us for the most part, patient wait times haven't been an issue. Occasionally we are because we'll have two or three that come in within an hour. He admits the hospital could benefit from having more sane nurses. The problem is they've struggled finding them. In addition to being trained in the collection and preservation of evidence, have to be clam they have to be trained in how to go to court and how to testify. So it's a very common complex process. He says expanding services to other hospitals just won't work. It has to be one hospital that's doing this because if it's not, it will fragment the whole system. The executive director of the Nevada Coalition to End Domestic and Sexual Violence says the lack of sane nurses is a concern. It's something the coalition wants to fix. To have that conversation, to understand why we have so few. The woman who shared her story with us thinks this system isn't ideal, but she would go through it again in a heartbeat. You're going to feel what you feel, and you have to just press through it if you want that person to be held accountable. Annalise Ortiz, 13 Action News. A memorial has been set up to remember the 18-year-old girl who was killed when a man drove through a crowd in Times Square. Police claim the driver, Richard Rojas, told them God made him do it, and he wanted to kill them all on Thursday. Rojas has a history of drunken driving and tested positive for PCP on Thursday. He's charged with murder and 20 counts of attempted murder. President Trump is in Saudi Arabia tonight, beginning his first overseas trip as commander in chief, but his domestic agenda remains clouded in controversy. The week began with accusations he leaked classified information on ISIS to Russian diplomats. That was followed by news that former FBI Director James Comey wrote a memo about a White House visit claiming President Trump tried to interfere with the investigation into Russian election meddling. Yesterday, a special counsel was named to head up the Russian probe. That was followed by a report the president called Comey a nut job, and firing him took pressure off the investigation. The entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion between certainly myself and my campaign, but I can always speak for myself and the Russians, zero. President Trump will visit five countries over the next eight days in part to let Middle East allies know the U.S. will stand with them in the war on terror. Well, former FBI Director James Comey will testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee, which will happen sometime after Memorial Day. The chairman says Comey will testify about his role in the development of the assessment that allegedly Russia interfered in last year's presidential election. President Donald Trump fired Comey last week. The Federal Appeals Court has struck down a Federal Aviation Administration rule that required people to register hobby drones. While the ruling bars the FAA from forcing hobby flyers to register, it does leave other rules related to drones in place. Two years ago, the FAA ordered hobby drone registration, citing safety concerns. Well, a new way to honor veterans in the Valley tonight. A replica of the Vietnam Memorial Wall is on display in the Valley for the first time in more than a decade. During the American Patriot Fest, a smaller version of the memorial will be on display. A veteran escort was alongside the wall as it went to Craig Ranch Regional Park. The portable wall was created so veterans didn't have to travel all the way to Washington, D.C. to see it. We get to come here and, and look at the wall and, uh, you know, a lot of us have survivor guilt and uh, we get to come here and, and, uh, and talk to our friends. Well, you can visit the wall for free until this Sunday around 3 o'clock. Right now, a funky
funky smell seeping into a restaurant has an outraged woman turning to 13 Action News. Check it out. A new outfit is stirring up an online frenzy. 13 Action News takes a closer look at how companies are trying to cash in on the online buzz. We're back in less than 90 seconds. The new video tonight out of Philadelphia captures the moment that the stolen SUV right here slams into a corner store. Two employees, one of whom is pregnant, is buried by debris after the crash. You can see everything on the shelves there come crashing down around them. Incredibly, though, both survived, and the pregnant woman says the baby is fine. The 18-year-old driver was arrested. New tonight, the local economy is showing a stronger pulse. According to a new study, Las Vegas is among the top five cities in the U.S. as a good place to start a business. Let's go to 13 Action News anchor Carla Wade with a closer look at why. Carla. Well, Steve, for one thing, it's just cheaper to do business here than many other places on the West Coast, and that means you can invest more money into getting your idea off the ground. By now, you've heard of the Romp Him, a male romper made by a startup company using Kickstarter for funding that is getting mixed reviews over whether it's fashion forward. I'm okay with the romper, navy blue all the way. Or a step back for all men kind. It don't look very comfortable with me. It looks weird. It's just a I'm little okay too feminine looking, <laughs> in my opinion. It's not very masculine. I'm a girl thing. But when Luke Pergandy wanted to jumpstart his business idea of a marketplace for sports betting tickets, he didn't look to crowdfunding. Instead, he looked at crossing the border. He left California and headed to Nevada. Because rents are high, maintenance is high, all these expenses add up. And he joined his business partner here in Las Vegas. That was almost two years ago. And Prop Swap was no longer just an idea, but a bona fide business. Living in Las Vegas, our costs are so low that we don't have to go out and raise money and sell our stock for cash to fund the business. And in case you're wondering, Las Vegas ranks alongside Miami, Austin, Los Angeles, and San Diego as the five cities with the highest startup activity. Trisha. <laughs> All right, Carla, thank you. Well, we buy a lot of things online these days, from clothing to home goods, but would you ever buy a car online? And we're not talking about Craigslist here. It sounds strange, but you might want to try it out so you don't waste your money. There are two websites that claim to save buyers thousands of dollars and they deliver your car right to you. Carvana has about 7,600 cars and lets you pick your payment. And you can easily find cars under $15,000. And Vroom works the same way and has free delivery to buyers here in Nevada. Once the car is delivered, you'll have a week to return it, and Vroom offers a 90-day warranty. We have more information about both of these sites on our website at ktnv.com. With triple-digit temps finally in the forecast, a lot of families will be swimming to stay cool. But tonight, health experts have a warning about a rise in a pool-related illness. The CDC says outbreaks of an intestinal illness caused by a chlorine-resistant microbe have doubled since 2014. It spreads when people who have it swim in public pools, then infects others who swallow the pool water. If you're infected, experts say you need to stay out of the pool for two weeks after the symptoms have stopped. Well, deadly for some, life-saving for others. Bee stings are being used to treat serious conditions, including cancer. It's called bee venom therapy. Ellie Lobel, a bee venom therapy expert, says bee venom saved her from certain death when she was suffering from Lyme disease and was in multiple organ failure. She says days after a killer bee attack, she says her symptoms began clearing up. So I spent two and a half years learning how to sting myself with bees and figuring out proper dosing of bee venom and got myself well. LaBelle says that there's science to back up the bee sting therapy, treating things like cancer, multiple sclerosis, and general pain. The venom attacks and penetrates and kills certain bacteria and cells that traditional medicines cannot. New tonight, a woman says a bad smell coming from a place near her restaurant in the northwest part of the valley is so revolting, it's driving her customers out the door. Now she says it's so bad, she's worried her livelihood is in danger. 13 Action News reporter Annalise Ortiz is working to get some answers. 
These days, that will be fine. Little Dumplings is preparing more to go orders. Thank you. And seeing less customers dine in. The business dropped little by little. Up to today, you can see we have a no dine-in. A bad sewage smell has been driving people away for almost a year. They'll sit down, they'll smell it, they'll eat it. Sometimes they'll do takeout, but most of the time they just get up and leave. But they say it's not coming from inside the restaurant. It's coming from the Starbucks that's next door that recently relocated. The owner of Little Dumpling, Ken Wong, is not only losing money, but also spending it. Thousands of dollars on numerous plumbers. We try to do best to fix it. But they 